Hi class, it's Bill Berry back with another video in our week one of Java 2 series. We talked in the last video about multi-dimensional arrays, specifically two-dimensional arrays, and now we're going to talk a little bit of, about enumerated types and what they can do for us. These are super useful. If you're looking in the Building Java Programs book, they're going to be in an appendix, so you'll have to look back in the back of the book to find them, but it is interesting reading. So let's jump into our enumerated types. So the first thing we're going to do is talk a little bit about the motivation. There's a slide for that. Talk about how they look in code. Uh, a couple of things to mention here is that they are free. When you go to do a two-string, they will automatically render themselves like most Java objects, so you don't have to write any special code to make them just show up when you print them they'll gonna they're gonna print their value uh, the other thing to note here is what kind of data sits underneath these things right the kind of data is an integer so they are very compact right in fact it's not I don't think it's even an int, right? This is actually going to be a smaller value than that. So they are very compact, and you don't have to worry about being wordy in an enum, because underneath it's going to turn into an integer, right, or something even smaller. So uh, we're also going to look at where these should live. Good encapsulation says put everything at the smallest possible scope. So often we're going to put these in the classes in which they are used. And we're going to, of course, talk about how to show them in diagrams and all of that good stuff. So let's jump into that now. All right, so the motivation is, let's say that you have a student class and you decide or you're asked to do something about student standings, where we want to be able to record things like, is a student on honor roll? Are they in good standing? Probation? Are they expelled? Maybe there's some standings like this. So you might think first, well, I'm just going to make a string, right? I'll take in a string. They can do a set method on it, a get method, blah, blah, blah. We can use strings. But what's the bad news about using a string? Well, because consistency is going to completely be uh, impossible to demand, right? It's going to be very hard to guarantee that the strings that come in match exactly what you want. So here are some preconditions that you're going to have to set. Um, well, I'm expecting them to type in honor roll. Maybe I'm imagining it lowercase. But what if they type the uppercase H or the uppercase R? What if they put the whole thing in uppercase? Is that all the same? Well, you'd say, well, it's not too big a deal. I can always force the case to be something, and, on, and that way it's it's going to be okay. Well, but how about spacing? What if they forget the space between the two R's? Uh, what if they put an underscore? Are you going to accept those? Uh, or are you going to reject all of those things? Or are you going to try to fix them up? Well, you might say, well, I guess I could try to fix them up, or I could, I guess I could figure out that. How about spelling? This is a completely valid spelling in some places. Do we try to allow that kind of stuff too? So by the time you see all of that, you're just going to realize strings are not really a great idea for this, right? Strings are just going to make it very hard, and it's going to make me write a lot of code. So one of the things that's cool about enumerated types is that it takes you you can force a list of values, and that bunch of values you don't have to check at runtime. Right? Instead of having the runtime checks that are on you, right, that are, have to be run in your code as preconditions, you actually turn these into compile time checks. So the cool thing is client code can't even compile if they don't use one of the values that you have set out in your enumerated type. So anytime you can move something from a runtime problem to a compile time problem, especially because it's somebody else's compile time problem, that is a big win, right? So enumerated types are great. Now, notice though there is a downside. You need to use these in cases where you know that things aren't going to tend to change, right? This is probably a time-tested complete list of all of the student standings. If you're not sure, then maybe this isn't the place for it, right? It should go in a file, should go in a database, should go somewhere else where it's easier for you to change them. But in cases where you kind of know what the full list is, these are really great. All right, so next, how do we diagram these things, right? We always want to know how we're going to represent them. Well, what you do in a UML class diagram is put them in a separate box. Even if later you're going to put them inside this class, there's no good way to say that, right, as we're going to see in a second. But notice that we use these special angle brackets. These are going to be used in a few cases, like static and enum, and maybe a couple that we'll see. So you use that word, and then you put the name of the class, and then you simply write all of the types, right, all of the values that go here. I put a plus in front of them because they are going to be public by nature. So I just write these all out exactly as I want them to be used. Now, if you want 
lowercase or you want mixed case. I wouldn't put spaces in them, right, because they're names for things, so you don't want that. But in in general, you know, spell it or, or uh, sort of write it out in the way that you want to see it. Because remember, when you print, you're going to see this, right? It's going to be done for free, and it's going to show just like this. So uh, that's how you show an enumerated type. And you, again, show it in a box just like this. Notice there's, again, there's no good way to say, hey, it's going to be inside here. The only little clue that might be good is that in addition to enum, we might actually put static in the box. We would put that right here, right, where we would actually show that. And when you see static on a freestanding type like that, you're kind of suspicious. And that, that sort of gives you a hint that it's probably going to be actually inside the class here, not separate. So that's an idea. The other thing that we can do is, since we know at their heart that they are going to be integers, right, we can just use them as if they're primitives. Right. Again, this is probably bending some UML rules, but I find this is completely reasonable, and the capital letters also helps uh, make that sort of stand out. Also, now this becomes a valid data type, right? So standing is a valid data type. So over here, we can have an instance variable called standing, and what is its data type? Standing. When you do get standing, what's returned? A standing. When you set standing, what do you pass in? Uh, standing. So you have, in essence, created your own little data type, and that data type can hold exactly one of those four values and nothing else ever, and that makes it very tidy, right? Your code is very tidy, and you have no checking to do. Now, one thing you do have to pay attention to, though, I cannot write this well, I'm sure here, but you do have to pay attention to null, because these references will be null by default, and you can pass in as a parameter here null, so you still do want to do a precondition check to look for nulls because that is something that can happen with an enumerated type, right? So it can be one of those four things, but it could also be null and you probably want to guard against that. All right, so uh, what else do we want to say? Yep, yeah, so this slide will just kind of encapsulate all of that stuff that we're talking about. All right, so how do you code these things? Well, the code is pretty straightforward, right? You say public enum standing. Now, notice in this case, I'm doing it inside the student class for better encapsulation, but it could be external. You can make your own your own uh, enumerated type. But notice we're going to put it in here because good encapsulation says, hey, this is a student standing. It really doesn't pertain to anything else. Now, it's public, so other people could actually get to it when they need it and use it to, to talk to you, which you'll need to do, but you don't use it anywhere else, right? It doesn't pertain to any other class particularly, so it really belongs in here. So, and notice that you can say static, but it's implied, so it's not creating one of these for every for every student, right? It is a static thing that you can use, but there's only one of those enumerated types created for all students right, the type itself. Now, in terms of instance variables, sure, you can make your own instance variable for that so that every student has their own standing and the data type is standing. And of course, just like we saw in the diagram before, the data type here when you pass something in is a standing. All right, so that makes perfectly good sense. All right, so take a pause on that if you want to look it over a little bit and then we'll move on to how you code it with uh, using code from outside the class. Okay, so what would you do if you're working in main, right? If you're writing code in main and you want to do set standing. Well, remember, this is the name of the enum, but since it lives in the student class, because that's what we decided in terms of encapsulation, you first have to say the name of the class in which the thing lives, and then you put a dot, and then you put the name of the enumerated type that you want to use, and then you put a dot, and then you put the name of the value, right? So class, enumerated type, class uh, type name and then the value that you want to use out there right and if you needed to test this again the same thing you can always test and you can by the way since again at their core they're going to be integers you can test these things with equals right they're not tested like objects with dot equals you just use an equal sign right if you want to test them you're going to use double equals like you always test anything else so if standing equal equal student dot standing dot on a roll Right, so all of the rest works very easily, and you know now that when you write this code, when you're writing in uh, up here, setting the standing, the only thing that we want to do here is remember, we probably want a precondition here to check for null. So don't forget that part. That's a bad code to not do that, uh, but you got the idea. Otherwise, you just use the variable as you, as you will. So hopefully that makes good sense to you. 
right? And so that is just a quick look at enumerated types, hopefully a review, but if you didn't see it in your course before, there you go, and read the appendix on the subject. The other thing to note is there's a lot more that enumerated uh, types can do. You can set them up in very fancy ways. You can give them their own two strings. You can actually use the, the indexes, right? Because each of these is going to sort of have a, an, a, a, an index, a sort of a count, so it's going to be 0, 1, 2, 3. So you can actually use the, the indexes in interesting ways. So all of these things are possible, and uh, read more if you want to really dig into what enumerated types can do. But this will do the basic stuff that we need for this project and probably for the whole class. So thanks for watching this video, and we will see you hopefully in another. The next time we'll, we'll pick up with some, uh, some following concepts. We may look at excellent, because that's a great way to, uh, to look deeper, have the compiler help you look deeper into your code. And then we may do a video also on debugging as part of this week, because debugging is your friend, and when you're in Java 2, you need to be able to debug your code, or you're going to spend a lot of hours uh, that you don't need to spend. So thanks for watching this video, and come back for another in the series.